Well, he was diagnosed with autism spectrum and ADHD. Having the autism, most people with autism, they kind of get caught up on one particular subject. Music is his greatest love in life. He's been hearing drum beats ever since he was three years old. And, um, but we just couldn't afford to get involved with music. So when the opportunity came for him to participate in this program, it was really a great opportunity. And as a result of that, he has become much more confident in himself, his abilities, he's become more calmer, and um, it just gives him a, a great venue to express himself. The program that Jameer is able to take advantage of is the Michigan State University Community Music School, or CMS. CMS was founded on the belief that music dramatically enhances the quality of life and offers opportunities for the study, appreciation, and therapeutic use of music while nurturing the musical development of all individuals. Well, Michigan State University has, as a, as a uh, land-grant university, is the university for all people. And, and um, though we're located in East Lansing, the president of our university and the board really wanted to commit to a, a presence here in Southeast Michigan that would, that would be kind of longstanding. And they asked that we have music here in this building. So, so we brought our community music school over to, um, to serve in this building. And the vision is that we're here for people with all levels of ability and all levels of income and all ages. So it's been really a great journey to kind of determine what is what this community, how we can best um, serve this community and here in Detroit. First of all, what is so exciting about this school is that we are located in Midtown Detroit and I think our mission is really to do the outreach, to reach out to the community. Um, we provide music therapy clinical services. There are other things in the school, jazz, aspiring youth musicians, um, the New Horizons Band, which is adult beginners. So we're really reaching out to the entire community. And what's exciting about that, as well as music therapy, is it's about reaching everyone for them to access music, whether or not they've had music in their past or have a particular talent. It's really about engaging people in music. Engaging people in music is indeed one of CMS's main goals. Arp Altenach is an eight-year-old boy who has been diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder. His father, Dennis, is a pediatric neuroradiologist. And then I brought him back in uh, 2009, uh, the June. It was a rough transition because we had very well established program back home in Turkey for him. It's like, you know, the whole day. Uh, and also lots of extracurricular activities for him, swimming and dancing, I mean, you know, music therapy. When, he, when we came, I mean, when they came, I tried to provide the same environment, but uh, it's really tough. I mean, it, this field is, it, this field needs immense improvement and, and I finally found a good program for him. Music has an amazing ability to engage us. It engages us with our emotions, it engages us physically. We'll tap our toes when we hear a song. It engages our memory. We hear a song and we can remember where we were when we, when we first heard it. Um, it connects us, it connects people. It also is a nonverbal medium, and because it's happening in time, um, right now, it can really engage and help children, perhaps with attention difficulties or learning difficulties, it really provides a structure for, for that learning. Yes, I, I, I'm a big fan of Elvis. I mean, I always listen to Elvis. And then, then one day I was recognized and he was actually singing. Then, then I actually turned the volume down, then he said, Dad, turn the volume up. This is the very first time I actually heard him saying in English, turn the volume up. And then, okay, I'm turning up. And then once the Elvis is over, then he said, 
one more, one more. <laughs> it's just funny. I mean, you know, then I told the, uh, Jody what happened, then he was amazed, she was amazed too. Nonverbalization is often a manifestation of pervasive developmental disorders. Caden's mother, Kalila Tolbert, has noticed a difference. Caden has been diagnosed with Asperger's, a form of autism, a high functioning form of autism. He was diagnosed through his school in January of 2010. He, he has an impeccable memory and I see it a lot with music, hearing something maybe one time and memorizing it. And he's loved music since he was an infant. He just responds to music. Um, but he's also very shy and he kind of has a shell to him. Even though he's high functioning, he kind of has some um, very distinctive characteristics of autism. So I, I figured therapy would kind of break him out of his shell and um, get rid of a little bit of that shyness. Is so um, that I can like? see that difference. It's going on a year oh, since he's yeah, been taking music one. therapy and I definitely if see the difference. Thomas is having a hard time forming words and sentences. He's very intelligent where he knows like sight words, his alphabet, he knows colors, shapes, but his uh, language development is, um, is a struggle for him. Um, you know, he would just burst into tears when he first came. <laughs> And now he's drumming and singing. He can sing the whole goodbye song. And, um, you know, I'm used to seeing some of those transformations. And, but then to hear the parents talk about how they haven't seen their child do certain things, it's um, really amazing. It's that power of music, I think. So uh, he's starting to form sentences. Uh, this morning he was like, Grandma, where are you? Because he spent the night with me. So uh, I, I see an improvement. He's starting to be able to, um, like this morning he was, uh, he said he wanted some bacon. So he asked for some breakfast, you know, so little, he used to just take me into the kitchen and point uh, when he wanted something and I had to figure out. Now he's starting to form words. Yeah. Hey, how are you? You ready for music? <laughs> yeah, great. All right, how about, uh, would you like a maraca? Would you like a maraca? Yes? Julia like Pavlicek has been attending music therapy sessions yes. at the Community Music School for over a year now. She has multiple disabilities. She's blind, um, has cerebral palsy. Um, Basically, like her whole left side of the brain was damaged. I think Julia is an excellent example. You can even see the change in her from when she is brought into the room and then um, taken out of her chair and, and engaging in music. She just blossoms and opens up and again, as, an, as a nonverbal client or student who um, doesn't have the, the speech language abilities that other individuals have. Music really gives her a voice and she has a sense of humor. She comes alive. She um, is actually musically and rhythmically quite talented and it's just amazing to share that with her. I think it's really great because she's come so far in her vocabulary and just being able to express herself better. So it's really great. We've never found anything like this. And we have people of all ages and from all, from all walks of life, really, who, who find that music therapy can be very healing um, in, in any number of ways. So uh, we're really proud of that program and grateful for what it can do for people in the community. But we're really here for, you know, everybody can benefit from music. And, and so we start with early childhood music education for the little zero to five year olds and, and uh, with their caregivers so that they have an opportunity to experience music together. And the things that you know, the parents or caregivers learn 
in the classroom can be taken home and can be used, you know, on a daily basis, really, to redirect attention and to, to help their children with um, learning language skills and so on. It's just another way that music can, can really um, work in a child's life. You ready for battle?